This is a tutorial about how to use Vernier Video Physics, which is an app that costs $4.99 in the iTunes Store. Nevertheless, it's a very powerful program that gives you a lot of options that normally would require an expensive program on the computer to use. When we first open up the program, we have the option of hitting the plus sign and importing data from existing videos, taking a new video, or using their sample videos. Normally you would probably want to choose an existing video, but for now let's just hit sample videos. I will use the basketball shot here, and it will actually, if you hit the play button, it will just show the basketball. Before you even start, you should hit the origin and scale button, which is right underneath the experiment label. Here, I will use my fingers just to drag the ends of this onto a meter stick that's on the floor. You want to be as close as possible. And we'll see here that it says it's equal to one meter. You also want to set your origin. Where is your x-axis? Where is your y-axis? Now you can f have it <coughs> when, it's, when the f if I just drag it along, I'll see the basketball first leaves the person's hand over here. If you want to rotate it because your own video might be somewhat inclined by accident, you have the option of rotating it like this. Okay. Now. If we go back to points, we have an option of using an auto tracker, but I'm not a big fan of the auto tracker because it doesn't always work very well. Rather, I'd rather just, it's easier just to draw points. So I will move this over here on top, and I'll pick the middle of the ball, and I'll tap the middle of the ball. And notice, it created a red dot, and the red ball jumped to the next frame. Now you can use the next frame if you want, or you could just skip ahead and plot wherever you see fit. You do not have to plot every single frame, but you should try to get at least 15 to 20 data points. So that way it ends up relatively accurate in terms of what the diagram is going to look like. So let me just skip ahead. I'll go to the apex here. I'll plot it. And I'll jump ahead a little bit. But what if I accidentally mess up? I make a whole bunch of points that make no sense. You have the option of just holding your finger on the screen as a long click until the blue arrows appear. And you can drag your square, or you can hit select all if you don't like any of it, and just delete the points that you think were pretty off. So if I didn't like that first point, I could delete it as well. So let me add in a couple more points. I could rewind a little bit here. Okay. Now once I have enough points, I can click on the graph button on the top right to take a look. Now I don't really want to graph y versus x axis, let's scroll to the right. And these are my x axis graphs. Okay, And you can see that the, x, the position time graph is very linear, which makes sense, but my velocity graph seems wonky. But understand that if you look at the values on the left-hand side, it's around 2.3, 2.4. It doesn't really change that much. So when we export it, we'll see what it really means. Over here is my y-axis. I have my position time graph on top and my velocity time graph on the bottom. So overall, you could take screenshots of these. Let's hit Done. But it's even better if I hit the Share button. If I hit the share button on the top right side, I can share the video, 
or the video of the points being put in. But in this case, I want to share the data file. It, when you share the data file, it's actually going, if you click on just your iMessage or email, it will save it as a .cmbl file, which you can import into Logger Pro, and also set, send a copy of the video clip. But in this case, let's actually share and open our data file in using Vernier's graphical analysis, which is the second option right here. Now, I've previously done a tutorial for graphical analysis, but he here we have a lot of different graphs that we see. We can see the position time graphs on top and the velocity time graphs on the bottom, but they have the x and y axis. So let's take a look at just the x. So I'm going to unclick the y, and I can see that for the most part, this selection looks very linear. On the bottom, let's take a look at the x velocity, so let's unclick the y. Now this looks off, but as I said, the value was pretty much constant the entire time. It's just because it's a very small value. If I zoom out, zoom out, you can see that on the y-axis, it's pretty much the same value on the y-axis the entire time. It's just that when you auto-scale it, anything that looks up close looks off. So rather than doing a, a fit, let's just do statistics. And we can see that the average value of my velocity was 2.325 meters per second, which matches the slope, which is about a slope of 2.3 meters per second as well. If I take a look at my y-axis, let's delete the annotation from before, let's delete this one over here and put on y-velocity, you can see over here, I have a quadratic fit for the y-axis position time graph. And over here, it almost looks linear. It's just with our points being plotted, it just looks a slightly off. But we get a nice slope of negative 8.7, as well as which more or less matches our work from above. Now, you may be asking, why doesn't this match the actual acceleration due to gravity? Well, the most common source of error is the scale that you created at the bottom. When you go to your scale, let's go back to this video over here, go to origin and scale, don't forget you can zoom in. And you want to be the, the scale to be as accurate as possible when you're plotting your points. Try not to put the scale at the bottom. As you can see, it's awkward to get the endpoints in there. And also, when you're po clicking on your points, Sometimes you, you have to make sure you click the exact same point every single time, in this case, which would be the, the middle of the basketball. You can take a look at your table data over here, but notice I do not have the option of manually generating my own data. But you can simply copy data and put it into a manual entry if you wanted to do linearization with your data. If you have any questions, just ask. Thank you very much for watching.